All right, guys. In the series here that I'm doing on these charts, we are on Car Lake here, Bugs Island. K-E-R, some people say Kerr, the old timers call it Car. I've been fishing this lake for a very long time, and I wanted to go through a lot of different lakes in the south. Most of the ones I'm gonna cover are lakes that I have fished before. If it's a lake I haven't fished before, I'll probably have a guest captain with me going over how he attacks the lake. So if you have a lake you want to see us cover, shoot me in the comments and I'll do my best to get that for you. All right, so we're going to cover all four seasons on this. Now, the, the purpose of these is not to burn spots and give away people's secret honey holes. You know, I'm not going to make many friends uh, locally on these bodies of water if I do that. And, uh, you know, you really don't need that to catch fish anyway. You know, basically it's understanding how these fish move throughout the different seasons to uh, locate them. So uh, let's just get started here. It's winter now, so let's do winter, right? So this uh, car is a little a little different. I mean, you have your main river here, river channel, the Roanoke River, your main stem that runs through, you know, comes in through narrow, shallow rivers, flows all the way down to the dam here and out. But there's another whole area, a whole branch to the lake that kind of makes it like an L. So we're just kind of, going to ignore this section here just a little bit just to make this a little more universal for more lakes that don't, you know don't have something like this smith mountain lake actually has something similar to this i do fish this area some as well but uh we'll stick to the main stuff here i'll cover this just a touch but let's go ahead and get get started winter time there are basically two different ways i will fish in a winter or two different areas depending on the weather okay if you have extremely stable weather where the weather has been the same for you know four five six days at a time very you know no crazy peaks in temperature or heavy rains or anything like that i like to fish shallow so you'll see these creeks here any creek on the on the lake can be great the more stable the weather is the warmer it's been in the winter the further i tend to go so these fish i'll go ahead and move this back a little bit these fish will follow the bait so at around noon, you know, when the sun has warmed a lot of this water way up here shallow, I'm talking like less than five feet of water, the shad will move way up shallow and the stripers will go after them. So a great place when the weather has been stable is to pull planter boards with live bait or cast small flukes, four to six inch flukes, anything from silver to green. I love chartreuse and green. You cast up in these shallow areas on these points, rattling rogues, jerk baits, anything that you can work shallow. These fish will move way up in here chasing the shad. So, I mean, I'm talking way back in here, you know, pull pull your baits all through these creeks. Now, any of the creeks will work. You know, some will work better than others. That's up to you to find out, you know, what's gonna work the best. This entire lower area that I told you we touch on a little bit can be like that. All these creeks can be great if they warm up. Look for bait, you know, pull in the back of the creeks. You see bait flipping, there's stripers there. I mean, it's... All there is to it, you just gotta make them bite. Now, if the weather has not been stable, or if it is stable too, I mean, but in the winter time, especially if it's not stable, I'll fish more towards the main lake. Uh, these little, uh, well, what I call, uh, you know, the first creeks or, or primary creeks. I call these, you know, secondary creeks back here, but primary stuff close to the main lake right here. This can be great also casting, dead sticking, where you're just, you know, straight up and down over the fish uh down lines with shad and herring can be really great all around just off the main lake in here trolling the main lake with umbrella rigs can be great and what's cool about striped bass in these southern lakes is they behave similarly in a lot of them so what's good for here will be good for a lot of lakes so even if this is not your lake you can follow a lot of these patterns and really do well so you know if, like i said if it's not quite as stable or uh the fish just happen to be holding here. Birds on the main lake are great to look for. Just off, just off the main lake here. So those are my two areas that I'll fish in the winter time. If you like to pull umbrella rigs, stroll in here on the side. I mean, just, just off, like I said, in some of these creeks around these points, just off the main lake can be fantastic. All right, let's say that's winter, springtime. These fish are gonna move way up the lake. So let's flip this sucker over. Okay the same one like i said on a lot of these southern lakes southeastern lakes so in the springtime they're going to follow this 
current and they're going to move up to spawn. Now, whether the eggs hatch, that's a whole nother story. Whether they go through the actual motions of spawning, that's another story depending on your lake. Here they go through the motions and I have people that, friends that have lived on this lake their whole life and they find very teeny tiny fingerling stripers that say they spawn and actually do reproduce. Now real quick, the reason why a lot of lakes will not reproduce striped bass is because they need several days to tumble after they spawn. They spawn up here and the eggs need to tumble. And in salt water, they can, you know, they can go 60 miles or so before they get water deeper than 10 feet. In a lake, it's different. So after a day or two, they can tumble off down over here into deeper water, 25 foot deep. And if they get 25 foot deep water, there's no oxygen down there, so they die. That's why they don't really reproduce in fresh water a lot. But they will go through the motions in a lot of these. So they'll follow the current way up and they'll spawn. Here they get way shallow. So if you've got, you know, if you've got a skiff or a duck boat and can get way up in here and fish shallow, you can have some epic days. But most of the guys on this particular lake don't do that. A lot of the lakes in the south will have a dam from another lake that's piling in. And when the fish move up here, they can just sit underneath that dam. It's very popular in Tennessee to get up there and have just some incredible days. Now, I do not have a skiff or a duck boat, so I don't go up here and chase these fish very shallow on this particular lake. So I go back up in the creeks, very similar to what I do in the winter. I'll go way in the back of these creeks here, very shallow, pretty much any of them. Even these smaller ones like up in here can be good. Just get all the way away in the backs of these here. Pull your pointer boards very shallow, no weight or very little weight, and get your baits way up on the bank or cast your flukes and jerk baits and, uh, you know, uh, get sits, uh, let's see, sluggos, anything right up on the, right up on the points, right up on the banks. Love that in springtime. If they're not all the way back here, move a little closer to the main lake. But if you've had that nice stable weather, they will all be all the way back in here. Great way to get them in the springtime. All right, just flipped it back over here. Let's go on to summer. Summer can be some of the easiest fishing because these fish have moved deeper and therefore they're under your electronics. You can find them easier with your fish finder. Here I do a lot of running and gunning. If I'm using down lines with live bait, if I'm trolling a little bit or if I'm casting or if I'm jigging, in any situation, I will always mark them before I fish, before I put a line out. So the other methods, I might not mark them, but for this style here in the summer, I will always mark them. So good rule of thumb, any of these points here that are close to the dam, good place to go ahead and get started on this lake in particular. But the main lake near the main channel anywhere on this lake and a lot of the southern lakes can be money and definitely a great place to get started so what i'll do is let's just say i launch over here somewhere i'll use my electronics especially my side scan and i'll concentrate on all these main lake points so i'll just run up and i'll cruise across them four or five miles an hour with my side scan if i if i don't see fish i drop down and i go ahead and throttle back up to 20 30 miles an hour i'll kind of pull into these mouths of these open mouths of these creeks kind of go in come out go in come out and i'm looking at my 2d sonar when i'm running 20 30 miles an hour i'm looking for bait and marks for for you know the actual stripers themselves if i don't see them on these deeper areas here i'll go ahead and use my side scan more and go a little bit slower and just pull up on these points and as i pull up on these points i'm just looking at my side scan that's it man i'm just just dialed in looking for arches and shadows if i don't see them i move i might just go ahead and throttle up and run a mile or so and then pull back up on them again i might run the other side of the lake but i'm always looking on either my 2d my chirp or i'm looking at my side scan i'm running faster and deeper for my chirp and when i get up shallower here i'm using my side scan but make sure you mark them before you before you put a line out because i mean you could be fishing here all day and not get a bite and just over here they were piled in there so go ahead and use your electronics. Down lines with herring, you know, trolling with down riggers, umbrella rigs, jigging. There's just so many ways you can catch them in the summertime using those electronics. All right, fall. Now, a lot of these southern lakes will have a what they call a false run. The striped bass will actually feel the urge to migrate. A lot of that comes with the temperature change in the air, the temperature in the water, the shortening of the days. They will feel that urge to migrate even though they can't migrate. They're in fresh water, they're landlocked. 
A lot of these lakes have a great false run. You can have some absolute epic, epic trips. So you want to concentrate on the upper end of the lakes in most of these situations. These fish will come all the way up just like they're spawning. They'll come all the way up and just hang out in these big long areas. And you can catch them on down lines, planter, you can catch it pretty much any way. Any way you like. Sometimes uh, the birds will be there showing you as the water's cooling off. They'll be eating all that shad that's getting pushed up. But you can catch them on down lines with herring, with shad. Planer boards with herring, shad, floats. Free lines, cast in flukes, jigging spoons, vertical jigging, uh, flutter jigging with your big Ben Parker spoons. I mean, pretty much any way you want. But they will come up here and they just call it a false run. For whatever reason, they feel the urge to spawn or at least migrate. So they get moving. And it's kind of funny how they'll get all bunched up in some of these areas. And it's true in a lot of lakes. Smith Mountain Lake has a nice false run. Uh, Gaston has one. Uh, pretty much all of them have some kind of a false run going, except for some of the lakes that may be a little strange. Jordan is a strange one. I'm not sure if they have a false run or not. If you're a Jordan guy, let me know if they do. But that's pretty much it. Those are the four seasons for freshwater lakes. Again, this is Car Lake. If you have a lake you'd like me to cover, or at least try to, I'd be happy to do so. Please give me one of these. It really helps. Helps me out. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. I really appreciate that too. And again, put in the comments. If you have an idea for a lake, uh, freshwater, saltwater, whatever you'd like this to cover, I'll go ahead and do my best to do that. Thanks for watching. Love you guys. Mean it. Keep watching. Thanks, guys.